All right, welcome back everyone to the commonly used Excel charts and functions video series. Today in lesson three, we will be going over the 3D pie chart and the donut chart. Just as a reminder, we suggest watching each video twice. Just watch it the first time and then watch and follow along the second. In the last lesson, we focused only on the 2D pie chart, but you may have noticed that when I went to the insert tab and chose the pie chart option, there was a choice to create a 3D pie. This seems kind of cool, but let's try that out today. I'm gonna highlight my data to make that 3D pie graph, select the pie and then go to 3D pie. Now I want you guys just to look at the graph here and ignore the data. And in fact, I'm gonna move it over so you can't cheat. And I want you guys just to look at each slice and tell me which slice is the biggest. When I take a look, I think this gray slice here is the biggest. What do you guys think? Let's check our guesses. To see which slice is bigger, I'm going to add those beta labels that we went over last time to make sure that each slice is labeled for the monetary value it represents. I'm gonna use the green plus sign on the right hand side and check off the data labels box. Now remember the legend is kind of small and hard to read so we want to move those quarter labels directly onto the slices themselves. To do that, just double click on the data labels and check off the category name box. Now we didn't go over label position in the last video. So under the label option boxes, there are the label position options. And basically what these options do is just move your data labels around on your graph. I'm going to choose outside end because it just makes the graph a little bit easier to read. All right, now that we have our data labeled, we can see that the gray slice here isn't the biggest and it's actually the yellow on the top. This visual trick is one of the main reasons why you should avoid using 3D in charts and especially in pie charts. The bottom two slices always appear bigger and the upper two slices appear smaller. This gives misleading information and distorts the data, which makes it harder for the audience to read. I'm gonna make a quick 2D Pi version of the same graph, just so that we can do a comparison. I'm gonna highlight my data, go to insert, select the Pi option and go to 2D Pi. This will just be a review of videos one and two. I'm gonna add those data labels and then I want them just to be a bit more detailed. Check off category name and then outside end. So having those two graphs right next to each other and comparing them, you can see in the 2D pie off the chart, it's so much easier to tell which slice is the biggest. This example here displays one of the most important lessons when you're making charts is that to avoid using 3D. To kind of extend this lesson farther, people use it to justify that pie charts should be avoided altogether. But pie charts are still very useful because they are the best chart to display a part and whole relationship. So each slice in a pie chart represents part of the whole pie. There are some other charts that display a similar part and whole relationship, so let's check those out. All right, now you can see I have some new data that I'm going to work with to display two new types of charts that have similar part and whole relationships that the pie chart has. To create the first one, I'm going to highlight my data, go to the insert tab, select the box, and choose the tree map chart. Now this chart looks a little bit different than what we're used to with the pie chart, but it has the same idea. Each rectangle represents a slice of the larger rectangle that it's a part of. One of the advantages of working with the tree map chart is that it orders each quarter from largest to smallest, and it automatically added those quarter labels for me. I still want to see if I can make those quarter labels more detailed by adding the sales amount, so I'm going to double click on them and go to my label options on the right hand side. As you can see, I don't have nearly as many options as I did when I was working with the pie chart. I can check off value to add those monetary sales numbers, but I don't have the option to use a percentage like I did in video two. 
I also don't have an option to move the label positioning around the chart, which is another disadvantage of the tree map chart. I'm going to make a quick 2D pie chart with the same data so that we can do a quick comparison between the two. And this will just be a visual review of videos one and two. All right, now that we have the two side by side, you can see that in the 2D pie chart, it is still a lot easier to tell that the yellow is the largest slice. And that again, in the 2D pie chart, the part and whole relationship in the circle is a lot stronger than the part and whole relationship in this rectangle here. Now we can move on to our final part and whole relationship chart, which is the donut chart. So I can highlight my data, go to insert, go to the pie chart option again, and then choose the donut chart. I'm going to move this one down below. So you can see with the donut chart, it looks very similar to the pie chart. It is just missing its center. Therefore, it experiences the same downsides that the pie chart does. This means that it's really hard to tell which segment is the largest. I'm going to see if I can add those data labels onto each segment just to make them a little more detailed and easier to read. I'm going to double click, use that uh, green, green plus sign on the right hand side and check off the data labels. I want to see if I can improve the legibility of the legend by adding those quarter labels directly onto the slices. So I'm going to double click, go to format data labels and select category name. So as you can see with the donut chart, I have more options to work with under the label options than I did with the tree map chart. But again, I still don't have that option to move the label positioning around. So the way they are right now, it looks kind of awkward with overlapping the middle and the outside. I'm going to bring down my pie chart again to do a quick comparison. And again, you can tell that in the 2D pie chart that the yellow is the biggest slice and that the part and whole relationship is a lot stronger than in the donut chart. This chart that we have here is a perfect example of when it's acceptable and even preferred to use a donut chart. You can see that our data is involved with project progress of a specific project with different percentages being completed, working, and have not started. Since each label has a specific color assigned to them, it is super easy to tell how much of the project has been completed, how much is currently being worked on, and how much hasn't started yet. All right, so that concludes today's lesson. Just to sum up our point, it is important to remember to never use 3D when creating any type of chart and to avoid using the tree map and donut chart when displaying a part and whole relationship. Thank you for watching and tune in next time where we will be talking more about the line chart.